All right, Mary, I'm finally on here. Okay. I'm um, going to just try to show you all how to make a new pair of pajama bottoms from a pair you have. Now, I got this pair at the Goodwill clearance. Okay. So you're going to open them up like this. And what you're going to do is we're going to turn them halfway wrong side out. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. <laughs> Alright, you get one wrong side out, take the leg that's not wrong side out, and shove it down inside the leg that you did turn wrong side out. Match up the seams. If I can find the seam. So you match that up there. That's your inner leg seam. <clears throat> and then just smooth it out. And you'll see what happens, basically, is a pattern forms. You just gotta get it to lay flat, that's all. Just keep working with it until you get, get it down to where it's flat looking here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick you all up and show you what this looks like, unless it looks good in the picture. You can pretty much see it. Um, might move you over a little bit here. All right. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I did, but I'm not going to actually do all of it again because I've already cut the pattern piece out. But um, this is a roll of basically pattern paper. This is just like the paper, well it's a little bit heavier than the paper that regular sewing patterns come from, but I buy this but from, by the roll, from Home Sews, and that's their website, but if you go to www.homesew.com and then type in the search engine on there, tracing paper by the roll, that's what will come up. And um, this will actually take you to the actual one that I buy. And it's 18 inches wide. Okay. So what you do is you take this paper, roll out about the length that you're going to need. And I am going to actually flip this over because I'm going to shorten the sewing that you have to do. Okay. Instead of having a seam that goes down the side, I'm going to line this up with just the edge of this paper here. Don't worry, just keep the leg straight. Don't worry where this indents here because we're going to come over from that. We actually need to come down a little bit more. Because you're going to need the extra that's drawn in from by the elastic. Okay? You're going to need that extra to create the bunching and the looseness up at the top. All right. Then what you do, you got it just laying there. Take a marker, and you see how they've got this folded up by about five eighths of an inch. And the reason I know it's five eighths of an inch is I've measured my thumbnail. Yes, I did. It makes hemming so much easier if you know the width of your thumbnail. What I do is I don't do my marking to be real specific, but you're going to add that increase there and maybe a little bit more. If these aren't quite long enough, you know, you can make them longer now. You just would draw a line. I don't want to get too crazy because... And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect either. Just kind of keep it the same distance. And then this line here you're going to want to add your seam allowance, which is 5 eighths. Again, with a thumb, you could do that. And then do that all the way up and around and around here. And then when you get here, stop midway. And you're going to eyeball what that would look like straight up, maybe to there. And then that would be, and again, this is just to, um, give you a general pattern and I made my pattern just a little bit bigger 
because the fabric I'm going to use is flannel and this is more of a knit. Okay, then you want to add some to the top because you've got to turn this down basically twice for um, your elastic and then you just come across, straight across. And then you can lift this. You can actually, if you want to, make a little mark midway on the, on the crotch area so that you make sure you can put a little nick there when you're cutting it out. I'll show you that in a minute. But that way you can make sure you're meeting your two legs together. All right? Then when you pick this up, you're done with your PJ pants. You, pants, you can put them back in the, in the drawer. Then you're going to just cut on the black line all the way around, okay? So now I've got another pair of pajama bottoms already drawn out, all right? Now, I can't find my pins, so I'm going to go with what I have on this cushion. And these are fabric scissors. <laughs> Don't get me started on it. You have your scissors, one for paper, one for pa uh, fabric. I've got to move this big chair here. Sorry, my head's in the way. All right, so now you got to keep in mind when you have all the cat's heads or, you know, fake ears are at the, this end, right? Okay, so you want to make sure that the waist, this section here, is always toward the top of the fabric. The, the direction where the animals will all lay this way. So if I wanted to cut all, both legs out at the same time, if it was a non-directional fabric, I would just take this fabric again and just fold it over because it wouldn't matter about the direction. But I have to pay attention because the cat's heads, I don't want some cats walking upside down basically. All right. And I just want to, they didn't cut this straight, but I've kind of got it straight salvage to salvage. So I just want to make sure I am not up too high for that. And I'm just going to the outer leg part. See, I actually did go in a little bit there. And I'm just going to kind of straighten it back up. And not have that indent there because I need that extra for... The, um, the elastic to tape up. And I have a limited amount of pins. I like to pin whatever's on the fold first. I'll show you one leg and then I'll cut the, can't, well, actually I'll show you some. Just bear with me. I know it's boring as mud watching something like paint dry and pinning steps. I might do this video in um, maybe two videos so that you don't have to sit and watch forever. be long now and it'll start getting cool and then I'll be glad. See I made a little mark right there, a little hash, hashy mark there. And you can either cut a little triangle to stick out from it or just do a little clip there just so you know you're matching up your legs good. I have a bunch of flannel in my stash and see I made a little mark there. It just helps you make sure that you're your legs are matching up even, and of course you'll match the, the waist and down here at the bottom of the leg. I've had this cut out a while, that's why it's all curling on me. If it was a, a fresh, fresh cut piece, it would be alright. Now if you're used to using um, fabric weights and stuff, you could just set fabric weights. I don't have any, I just use pins. And then I just cut along the pattern, and what I'm going to do It's just cut straight across here. Okay. I'm going to cut straight across here. Pull that pin back a little bit.
And because we're laying this on the fold, I'm not worrying about um, I'm not worrying about making sure the pattern piece is straight with a, a line down the center of the leg. So the bias, the bias isn't going to come into play for me on this. Alright, so now we've got a pattern like this. All right, but the next piece you want to face the other direction. So what you have to do, flip this over, okay? And we're going to flip this over. Okay? And if you wanted to get really fussy, you can kind of match up the cats. This is a little uneven, but. I'm not worried about it. It's just something I'm going to sleep in. Now, if it was something I was wearing out, I'd make sure I pressed the fabric well. Um, sorry, my nose is itching all of a sudden. I'm going to turn it around here. So now we're upside down. Let's see. And generally, I would take the time to take all those pins out and repin it, but I'll just pin through all the layers here to save us time. want to keep it from running away from me. And I don't have my machine out here set up yet. Alright. Alright, I might can cut it just like that. Let's see. We're just going to cut it right along where we cut the other one. Save this fabric for a small project for pat, um, patchwork. Alright, there you go. Now, the fun part. I gotta unpin that so I can see what I'm doing. Actually, just it doesn't really matter where you pin, uh, do your little chop as long as it's in all layers. So like if we wanted to just do a little snip right here, don't go too deep, only about a quarter of an inch. And then we'll do another one like midway here. It just is a reference point for when you're pinning things together, okay? I'll take the pins out of this one. Uh-oh. There's a leg. Don't unfold them yet. Leave them just like this, okay? are right there together, still together. So if you accidentally get them unfolded before you do the stitching, you can use that as a matching point. Alright? Do this on both legs. Alright, so there's one. And because of my when I'm sewing, my seam guide is on the side. I'm flipping this over so that they're 
they're together and going in the same direction. Now I also have a serger. I have three sewing machines and a serger. So one of them will be brought out here. Um, if you use the serger, you don't have to do another finishing step. You're done. It, it trims it, it finishes the edge and everything. I'm just not used to using a serger. So what I do is I stitch a straight, a straight seam with straight stitch and then I'll come back and maybe um, trim it a little bit and then zigzag over. That's if you don't have a, if you don't have a serger or haven't gotten used to it, that's what you can do. All right, we're going to stop here and I'll pick back up in my sewing room. Okay, we're in here by the sewing machine and I'm going to try to do this without smacking the camera. All right. Now, this machine's plate isn't marked with the um, the increments. It's just got these little blocks, and I know that the little block I've put a little mark on it about where my five eighths inch seam would be, and um, it's basically just on the outer edge of this circle. I don't know why this plate on this machine is like that. It just always has been. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to line the edge up. Don't worry about this so much, okay? As long as you're going about even, you'll be all right. It is bothering me, though, so. There we go. You're going to feed that in, drop your presser foot, okay? I'm not straight on this, so who knows what this seam is going to look like. We'll see. Uh, I've got to, I got to change it. I don't want that. I want it to just stay in the middle. I want it at about a two. Okay. So you take a, why are you still doing a zigzag? Why are you still doing a zigzag? No, that's tension. There we go. Width, length. Let's do a two on the length. All right. There we go. So do three or four stitches and then do back stitches. That's when I push this lever down, it makes it go back, okay? And then you just sew along. I never sew over pins. I know a lot of people do, but I don't because I've seen. I've seen a really bad pin accident, so I just, I don't go there. I stop with a needle down, pull the pin out. y'all. A couple back stitches just to lock it in place. And then I don't undo that. To save thread, just start your next piece. Just get it under there. Stitch a few forward, a few back. Stop with the needle down, pull your pin out main reason to stop with the needle down is so that it's holding the fabric in place and you don't stab yourself with a needle. And it might look like I'm re really off, but it's only like just a tiny bit fluctuating, so I'm good. I didn't put the needle down. See, I could have stabbed myself, but I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I like the button that puts the needle in the fabric.
then do your back stitching. And the, yes, the thread doesn't match, but it's pajama bottoms, people. It's not anything fancy. Okay? Now, if I had my serger set up or whatever, I could serge the edges now. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to see what y'all are seeing here. Let me see what y'all are seeing. Because you need to see more now. Alright, that's about as far back as it's going to get. Get my old fat gut back in the shot. Sorry about that here. So let's see. You're like right along in here somewhere. Um, what we're going to do, let's get that up there. I want to trim this edge. And um, usually I use pinking shears, so let me grab them. Pinking shears look like alligators jaws okay don't cut on the stitch line you're gonna leave about a quarter of an inch and I just eyeball it and you can do pinking shears and then just call it done or you can do pinking shears and then do a zigzag whatever you want to do the pinking shears will help keep it from fraying all up. But I just like to lock it all in with a zigzag. I'm a little rusty in the sewing department. I haven't done any in a while. But I'm trying to think of things I can do throughout the month of August that you guys can do for inexpensive, quick Christmas gifts. If you find out somebody's got a pair of sleeping pants that they're their favorite pants that their mom has said that they are their favorite but they're really worn out see if you can get them from the their mother sneak them out of the house I mean they just tell them they got lost in the laundry or something <laughs> and make them up some new ones okay I'm gonna go ahead and trim this other one because it doesn't take but a minute and boy my seam is crooked as I'll get out but I'll get better once I get back in practice. Promise. It gets easier and better if, the more you do. It also would help if I'd had glasses on. I need to go get my eyes checked, I think. <laughs> you all can see how crooked I sewed it. And it still won't matter because these are a loose fitting pant All right. let that go away you can save this little bit and use it for um, stuffing on a pin cushion if you want to All right, I'm gonna give it some width to zigzag down through here and I'm going to line where I stitched where the stitches are with the side of this here like so oh that ain't gonna work let's um all right we'll line it up with the inside edge of here and see if that'll do that's what I want okay go back a couple stitches just to lock it in place and then we'll just go on down through just want to make sure you're not catching fabric from the other side of the pants under the stitches or you'll have to use your seam ripper. Couple stitches back, forward. So you wouldn't even need to take the pajama pants. You could just take some paper over. You can use newspaper. You don't have to buy pattern paper. Just use newspaper tape together to make a temporary pattern.
Okay. It doesn't matter which one, but take one of the legs and turn it right side out, okay? There we have a leg with of cats. I have a lot of cat fabric. All right, so now you're gonna take the one that is right side out and you're gonna shove it inside of the one that is not, matching these seams. And you can make one fold in one direction and the other fold in the other direction. And um, that way it won't be bulky, okay? So we're gonna open this up get it to quit grabbing on itself here. Find where your seam is, right here. And so that's in the right here in your hand, and then just shove it down in there. That way, when you get to the end, you can match them up and hold them together. And this is where I'm saying, you can get those in there like that. I don't know what I was saying, never mind. <clears throat> Basically, what we're going to do is I'm trying to find it. There we go. All right. We're at the top of the leg. This is the crotch area, okay? So push, put that one so it faces that way, and this one this way, so that when you set them together, they kind of lock together there, and you can put a pin in through all the layers, like so, okay? Then you want to kind of shuck the one that's right side out down inside the one that's wrong side out. And see, this is where your nips come in handy. See, there's those two little nips. Match them up and pin them. And then match your top edge up at your waistband here. Okay. And because we're in a curve, um, put your pins just slightly closer together to keep the fabric from traveling. Um, I know most sewing patterns will tell you to stay stitch. That's stitching a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric to keep it from um, warping and stretching. But if you use a lot of pins in a curve, it'll hold it for you. Because I've got that nick there, I'm going to put an extra one here. Maybe that one's dull as it can be. I need to go through my pins and test them and get rid of the ones that are dull tips. Okay? Then you'll want to go ahead and pin from, from the um, where the two legs meet up to your up to your th um, your little nip that you put in it. And you do this all the way around the crotch area. Alright. Alright, so that's like one side of the crotch area. Now we gotta do the back half here. Alright, there's your little nips. Get them matched up and put a pin or two in there. So there's one. Now if you were real picky about it, you could match the cats up. And um, it's just that takes a little bit of extra fabric. So if you want it to match all the way around your hips or or your legs or whatever, you have to buy extra fabric to match the print. And I don't like to do that. I just buy twice the length of my paint of my legs, my actual legs. I'll buy twice the length plus six inches, and that'll give me room for um, waistband and hems. So when you go to buy fabric and you don't know somebody's size, if you know their pant size, you will know their length of their leg. Like if they wear a 3832, the 32 is the length of the leg. I'm not worried that this is a little taller on this one because I think there's a wrinkle in the fabric and I can trim it smooth later if I want to or just take it into account. All right, we're almost got it pinned. You just have to be careful not to, you know, stab yourself with the pins now. All right, now, we've got this uh, pinned. 
you see all the way on both sides take that part away and start on this side and we're going to do just like we did on the side of the leg we will stitch around oh forgot to change it back to a zero on the width all right and now we just start sewing I should get back in the habit of making sure the needle's down just for safety but if you ever have to lift lift your presser foot to get the pin out really you need to make sure that your uh, pin is down in the fabric to hold it in place or it'll fall out from under the, the presser foot and then you'll be in a pickle This video is going to be longer than I wanted it to be. Alright, I'm lifting this up just to see. I want one going one way and one the other just so I don't have excess of bulk in the crotch area of the pants. And you kind of have to let, as the fabric is going, because this is a curve, gently turn it. Don't stretch it. Don't pull it. Just gently turn it as you're going around the rounded edge. If you pull it, then you'll have um, puckering occur, which is not a good thing in the crotch area. Almost to the other side. lamp is really hot y'all okay now before I go any farther I'm gonna make sure you guys are still recording all right before we trim this with the pinking shears to give ease of movement to this big rounded section we're gonna clip with regular scissors to the stitching line in the curves so Let's get this turned around so I'm in the curve here. Like I would put a clip here to the stitching and one here just to get me around this curve. And that's the whole reason you want to do it is to kind of give the fabric some ease so it doesn't pull or tear. Okay. And then we'll put the pinking shears to it have to clean up the floor when I'm done here and you can see again how crooked I was and I'm not worried about that but as you get better and more at practice with your sewing your seam will be a lot straighter than that plus I'm trying to rush and you might think oh you're cutting it all away those little nips go all the way to the stitching Yes, I'm cutting backwards too. Ooh, that lamp makes it hot. But I want y'all to be able to see, okay? Now we'll switch this back to a zigzag. And we'll quickly zigzag around. And then we'll watch the magic happen. Just back. Uh oh. Why is it doing that? Okay. That is a sound we don't like. Let's pull the bobbin out. Let's see. 
leave. We've got, yeah, it's time for a cleaning on this one, I think. I'll set that back in. And when you're putting your thread down to pull up from the bottom, always pull your, your hand wheel toward you. Alright, let's try this again. Be a good girl. I didn't cut all the way off. Craig's listening to something with cows. I'll meet you in the other room. All right, okay, so here we go. We've got one leg inside the other leg. Um, we've sewn down the inner legs on both sides. We've sewn the crotch. So now we're going to reach in. And grab the leg that we put inside the other leg and flip it outside to the outside, flip that one out, and look, new PJs, all right, so now all you have to do is hem these, um, hem them and add a waistband to them, and you've got yourself a new pair of pajama bottoms, and I did make these looser fitting, oh gosh, sorry, um, than the ones, you know, that I had over um, from the thrift store, simply because these are not stretchy fabric here. Ooh, I would have loved these. I have a bunch more of this uh, flannel, so I'm going to make myself some more. Um, let me know in the comments if you need to see how to do the hem and the waistband. Basically, for the hem, I would just stitch around the, the leg with a stay stitch at whatever width you want your hem to be. Then fold your edge up to that stitch line and then fold it up again and then just stitch it down. That's all there is to a hem. Now the waistband, you have to fold it over a quarter of an inch and I would actually just fold it over a quarter of an inch and maybe even stay stitch it fold it over. So I would go around and kind of do a quarter inch all the way around. And then whatever the width of your elastic, fold this down so the elastic will fit through. And what you're going to do is you're going to sew it like that, about a quarter inch folded under. You might want to stay stitch your, um, your, the seams at the back and the front just so the elastic won't get stuck when you're feeding it through. But you fold that down and there. And you're going to leave a little opening from where you start and you stop sewing so you have somewhere to feed the elastic through. Once the elastic's been fed through and sewn together at their ends and tucked in, then you can, you know, by machine or by hand, you can close the little opening that you've left. That is all there is to it. And um, I hope you all have enjoyed this little tutorial on how to take your favorite PJ bottoms and make more. Um, I'll even lay them out so you can see. See that? I made mine a little bit longer on, on the, the flannel too because these are a little short for me. So anyway, there you go. Have fun! Bye guys!